Hi guys, welcome. So as you can see from the title of today's video, we're talking about Qatar, baby. We're going to talk about top to bottom, all the necessary information you need to know about this country, whether you're just traveling through, you're planning on coming for the World Cup, you're planning on working here, or you're planning on living here. I am a big supporter of doing due diligence before you visit a place just to have some accurate background and information on the place that you're going to. So we'll start off with some important details and information about the country. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. So my name is Emily. I am an American citizen baby, but currently I'm living in Doha, Qatar, and I'm going into my third year of living in this country which is a bit crazy to think how quick time goes. But originally what brought me here was education. I started off in Qatar at a nine month Arabic language program. And now I'm currently doing my master's degree and my research here in Qatar. So I feel like I have some credibility to my voice out here in terms of living in the country. So let's start off with some basic information. Qatar is a very small country located in the Persian Arab Gulf, also known as one of the Gulf countries. The countries surrounding Qatar include Saudi Arabia and the UAE or United Arab Emirates, as well as Bahrain to the north. In terms of the size of Qatar, Qatar is actually quite a small country. Land-wise, Qatar is slightly smaller in area than the U.S. state of Connecticut. The Qatar Peninsula is about 100 miles or 160 kilometers from north to south and 50 miles or 80 kilometers from east to west. So though Qatar is quite a small country, geographically speaking, it does make quite a big impact baby in the global market. So the currency in Qatar is real and the current conversion rate from one Qatari real to one USD is 3.64. So one US dollar is equivalent to 3.64 Qatari reals. So the population of Qatar, this is actually a fascinating statistic, is 2.8 million people living in the country, but the actual population of locals or true Qataris living in the country is around between technically 300 to 500,000. So that means the majority of the population within Qatar are expats. So Qataris are a minority within their own country, which I think is something fascinating and kind of unique to this country. So the capital of Qatar is Doha, which is the biggest city and kind of the main central hub for everything within Qatar. That's where the headquarters of most large companies are. It's where the ministries are based. It's literally the epicenter of everything going on in Qatar is happening in Doha. So language, the language of Qatar is Arabic, but it's very common for people to speak English here. So you don't need to know Arabic in order to get around in Qatar, but obviously I'm very pro Arabic language learning. So I think it'd be nice for you guys to know at least some Arabic, especially if you're coming for the World Cup and you've never been to the Middle East, just to interact with people in their native language, I think is the ultimate sign of respect. So yes, the native language here is Arabic, but most people speak English and you should be fine getting around here if you just speak English. So in terms of government and leadership in Qatar, quickly I'm going to go through some important people in the government that you should know if you're coming to Qatar. So the current ruler of the country is Sheikh Tamim bin Hamid Al Thani. His father was the ruler before him, Sheikh Hamid bin Khalifa Al Thani, and his wife, Sheikh Moza bin Nasser. And Sheikh Tamim has been running the country since 2013. We have Sheikh Hind bin Hamid bin Khalifa Al Thani, who is currently the CEO of Qatar Foundation. As well, we have Sheikh Jawan bin Hamid bin Khalifa Al Thani, who is the head of the Olympic Committee. He's very involved in sports. We have Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Thani, who is very involved in government and foreign relations. Then we have Sheikh Khalifa bin Hamid bin Khalifa Al Thani. Onward, we have Sheikh Al Mayasa bin Hamid bin Khalifa Al Thani, who's very involved in the museum and art sector. So. There are a lot of prominent Al Thani government figures who are really out here working so hard for their country. Religion. So the religion in Qatar, it's an Islamic country. So I get asked this question all the time, especially when I go back to the States and visit my friends or family. People ask me, Emily, do you need to wear an abaya or do you need to wear a hijab? And my answer to that is no. Generally, you have to dress modestly and respectfully. There is a dress code, but it's not so aggressively enforced. But in my opinion, out of respect, you should adapt to the culture or society that you're going to. So if you're a guest in somebody else's house, you should follow the rules that they set. So for women, just make sure that you cover your shoulders and your knees. And for men, don't wear tank tops or short shorts as well. Modesty does go both ways. So in terms of holidays in Qatar, we have two main days. On February 9th, we have National Sports Day, which is such an awesome holiday. It's a whole day focused on sports and increasing the physical activity levels of the population here in Qatar. I think it's something really great. 
And as well, they have National Day, which is December 18th, which is Qatari National Day. People go out to the streets and they celebrate this beautiful country. For those of you who are Muslim or have lived in an Islamic country, you know that they have Ramadan. And then after Ramadan, they have Eid. Ramadan changes each year as to the timing of it. So Eid will change as well. But those are the main holidays. National Sports Day, Qatar National Day, Ramadan, and Eid. Important things to know. More bits of information that you guys might find useful. So Qatar has been known for being one of the richest countries in the world per capita. And I would say, of course, that's true. It is quite a small country and the salaries do tend to be quite high. So from an article published in USA Today in 2019, it named Qatar as the richest country in the world per capita, noting that the GNI per capita is $116,799. As well, the main industries in Qatar include oil and natural gas, but as well, they have a lot of different companies. They have Qatar Airways, Al Jazeera, which is headquartered here in Qatar. Everyone has been affected by the COVID pandemic, but in terms of economy, Qatar is out here doing its thing and providing a good lifestyle for a lot of people. So say that you're coming to Qatar for the World Cup or you're just visiting or you're going to work here. You probably want to know how Qatari people are. So as I've mentioned, Qataris make up such a small percentage of the actual country's citizens. So if you do have access to Qataris, definitely talk with them, get to know about their country through them. Um, I have many, many, many Qatari friends. And for that, I'm very grateful and very fortunate because I feel it's given me a good grasp of this country by learning about the country from the people who are from the country. So transportation. In terms of transportation in Qatar, technically you have three options. First option is getting your own car, which I would suggest to be one of the top choices if you're going to be here for quite a while. Second is Uber or taxis. I use Uber to get around basically everywhere in this country and I have no issues in terms of finding an Uber. The cost of Ubers are pretty, I don't want to say similar to the US because obviously it depends on where you're, where you're at, but they're not terribly unaffordable. It's, it's suitable for my lifestyle. And the last option is the Qatar Rail or the Doha Metro, which just recently opened up and it is a phenomenal, phenomenal transportation option. It's only two real per way if you get the standard fare to go wherever you need to go. And it's going to be really easy for you to get around the country without having to deal with the traffic on the road. Okay, let's talk about weather in Qatar. Very important topic. So Qatar is a desert and not only is it a desert, but it has humidity. So if you're from the United States, imagine Arizona heat with Florida humidity. And that is the climate of beautiful Qatar, baby. It is quite humbling when you first come here and you first arrive here just to give you some particular information the climate is hot and humid from june to september with the daytime temperatures as high as 122 degrees fahrenheit or 50 degrees celsius with the spring and fall months april may october and november the temperature averaging about 63 degrees fahrenheit or 17 degrees celsius and the winters are slightly cooler so definitely if you're not used to living in a desert you will have to adjust to the climate but it comes with the territory, baby. Okay, so let's talk about safety in Qatar. So this is from an article called travelsafeabroad.com slash Qatar, but also I'll just give you my personal experience because I'm a single female like living in a foreign country by myself. So obviously I can give you some personal anecdotes about if I feel this country is safe or not. The website states that in terms of safety, Qatar is generally very safe to travel to. Apart from some natural threats to watch out for, you should have no worries about your safety. Also noting that crime rates are low. So my experience from living in this country for nearly three years, Qatar is extremely safe. Yeah, Qatar is very, very safe. I take Ubers and taxis by myself at all times and the cops here, the police here are very on top of things. If you ever had an issue, you could just call them and immediately they would come and help you. So in terms of the safety of this country, I wouldn't have any reservations about it. It's quite a safe country and you should be fine coming here, living here. Obviously take necessary precautions and just be mindful. But even for me, when I'm here in Doha, I'll literally leave my purse on a table or leave my wallet on the table or my cell phone on the table and go do something and then come back. And it's just, it's a very safe country. So let's talk about health. So in Qatar, the main hospital is Hamid Hospital. And if you are a resident here in the country, you can get free medical services provided to you from the government hospital, which is Hamid. So this is a massive, massive benefit, especially as I said, I'm a US citizen and we have to pay for health insurance. So the fact that if you're a resident here and you have a residence permit, you do have access to free healthcare, which is 
kind of a fat blessing <laughs> to be honest weekends so the weekends in guitar are from friday to saturday because it's an islamic country friday is kind of like the sunday in a christian community if you get what i mean so friday is the day that everyone goes to the mosque and they pray it's the holy day in islam it's juma prayer so friday is kind of the day of god in the middle east it's the same way in sunday you go to church and spend time with your family and gather with friends so friday and saturday are the weekend here in qatar and then the working week is from sunday to thursday let's talk about local qataris dress so you will come to qatar and you will see local qataris men wearing something called a thobe which is the white long gown that they wear as well on top they wear something called a ghitra which is the head covering and then for women you will see them wearing generally abayas with hijabs it's, it's a traditional way of dressing and it's kind of a way to represent your country and to kind of hold on to your national pride like we are qatari this is how i represent my nation yada 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 so yeah this is what you will likely see locals wearing as well if i can find a video i don't want to get copyrighted but i'll put a clip of the qatari national anthem because something nice to know if you're coming to the country other than that if you have any questions about qatar that i can help answer specifically i know lots of people are coming to the country for the world cup in 2022 so i think it's very important to do your due diligence know what the country is about know where you're coming to so that you can adapt to the culture that you're about to come to and yeah i hope you guys found this video useful again please leave any comments down below my name is emily peace y'all